What is going on, everybody? It's Josh Wilson and back in the studio at the Big Dog Podcast with my man Jonathan Mack. Jonathan, what's going on, baby? Nothing much, just hanging out. Did you enjoy college football this weekend at all? Uh yeah. I got to see uh Virginia beat up on an FCS team. Real competition starts next week. Yeah. Um did you see any of the ODU game? Oh yeah, I mean, I was telling all my tech friends, I was like, "ODU's in the Sun Belt Conference. They're they're coming for your heads." Oh my gosh, man! Talk about trash. I mean, it's just uh, it's just funny to me because I have so many friends that went to Tech and Virginia Tech. It, for those who don't know, like it really is a cult. Like I don't think I would describe anywhere else other than maybe Penn State is like, like their that, fandom. Yeah, their oh, fandom is sure. just like yes. a cult. Like they everywhere they go, it is Virginia Tech everything. Yeah, somebody was talking about. Well, okay, yeah, ODU got them, but it wasn't ODU. I was like, man, there are more Virginia Tech fans at that game than there are ODU fans. Oh yeah, and, and, and that's damn near any stadium they go to. The city of Norfolk won in more ways than one over Virginia Tech. You hear what happened? Yeah, they got in the locker room and they shut down their elevators. <laughs> yeah, they, they, some somebody <laughs> shut down their elevators. People were getting robbed. Oh my god, what? I wonder what got robbed out of the locker room. Uh, probably if I know anything, it's probably just cell phones and yeah. like speakers and things that were left out. Uh, just stuff like that. That's funny. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's unfortunate, but I mean, it's very much it's very much on brand for Norfolk. It's it's what? on brand for Norfolk, and it's uh, it's just such a terrible look because when you think about the thought process behind it, you know they were thinking, well, we're not going to rob the home team. What do you, right. what? Yeah, we're gonna go into the visitors' Let's locker go over room. Here. And then you don't think about the repercussions that has like ODU just signed on to like a massive conference deal to be in the Sun Belt. Now every right. other team is looking at them like, bro, get get it together. Hey, you can't bring everybody with you. <laughs> <laughs> Look, sometimes, sometimes some of your friends got to stay behind. <laughs> that was just a crazy thing to read because uh, I have a friend that I played football with uh, and play fantasy football with now that is a coach for Virginia Tech. So it is. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Man, look, we were at um, the super competitive, uh, what was it, Heritage Tab football game on Friday night. and um, Competitive? I, I mean, it wasn't very entertaining. I mean, the boys are out there doing their best. And okay, was yeah, it was. I, think, I thought so. I mean, it was close. It was really close. It was much closer than I thought it would have been. So I'm thinking off year for Heritage. I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm <laughs> bewildered. I don't know. It was um, – yeah, it was much closer than I expected. We were only there for maybe a quarter. I I had to go. It, the air was very stagnant in the stands. There wasn't there wasn't good airflow. Was it at Todd? No, it was at uh, what y'all call it in York County uh, Bailey, Bailey Field. Bailey. Yeah the the wind when I got up in the stands the wind died down and I I needed more air circulation. And I also have a hard time when everybody's a commentator, right? Like, I get excited. I might even get a little loud at a sporting event if I really, really care. This high school game, I really don't care. I'm there only because I got to pick up my daughter and her friend to take them home. So Devin and I run up there for a little bit. Man, everybody's a commentator, though. Every Everybody knows better than the coaches, right? Well, well what he needs to do, what he should have done, the play they should have called, and the best was this poor ref, poor ref, Whatever. The poor ref, they didn't like his call. Well, that wasn't the call. They just didn't announce what the call was yet. They made assumptions. So this guy's a jackass. This guy doesn't know what he's doing. This guy's a loser. I mean, these, these clowns are just screaming everything about this ref. The ref then makes the call of why the flag was thrown. Oh, this dude's a saint. Of course. Man, you're great. You're the best. I'm like, you fickle ass. Like, what are you, what, what are you doing? But everybody's a commentator. Everybody knows best. And that gets on my nerves. I understand it. Um, it's also frustrating from coming from people who might not know the game, like, intimately. So when you right. hear the comments, you're just kind of yeah. like, this is this is way off base. But who's who's coaching at Tab now? Is it still the same head coach? Bro, I don't know. I was about I to say, because no if it is, I have no comment because I might be one of those, I, I those have, commentators. I have no clue. Um, I don't know who it is. I don't, I don't know. But there's a couple of like, our friends' kids who were playing, so that was cool to watch them run around. Um, and and it was fine. Like I said, the only reason I was there, I was picking up the kid. <laughs> That's never right. what you want to hear when someone comes to watch you play football. It was fun to watch you run around. <laughs> I mean, it. have you seen that? Never mind. Let me stop before I 
I'll, we'll talk off <laughs> off the show. But I know you've seen this video where. No, I can't. I won't. I'll save it. It's really funny, though. You're going to laugh. Remind me. Make sure I bring it up. When we're you. done. But anyway, that and then, of course, college kicked off this weekend was freaking so exciting. I mean, there was such good football uh, this weekend. Uh, Notre Dame, Ohio State. Hey, I was pleased with how the game went down. I thought they represented really, really well. Team looked really, really good. And Ohio State looked uh, like Ohio State kind of thought they'd look good. Yeah. They didn't drop 80 points like everybody was saying. I've never heard so much disrespect in my life than I did Saturday morning watching all the shows leading up to that game. I mean, they were just like, there is no chance. They're going to drop 50 points on them. I think it was because everybody expects the fact that Ohio State returned with a good quarterback and Notre Dame was kind of entering with an unproven guy that hasn't started for him yet. Uh, I will just say that uh, Notre Dame's ability to be a great team, because good teams win, great teams yep. cover, yep. Uh, their ability to cover cost me a win, <laughs> a, a win of $700, $700 on a $5 bet because I bet all the spread. Oh, so you all, did. The, all the spread bets, just yep. five dollars, and yeah. then that was the last game I needed. And if Ohio State mm -hmm. would have scored one more time, I would have nope. covered. Nope, 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 nope. I was impressed with the young quarterback for Notre Dame. I mean, he he was getting killed, but he came out to play. He wasn't scared. I mean, the kid came out to play, so it was fun. But there was a lot of really, really good, good football. You seen that tight end for Georgia? Uh, no, I tried. I uh, Georgia, I just pay attention to their defense because those are the guys the Steelers are going to draft. Man, look, this dude's 6'7", 270, jumping people like he's a track athlete. I, freak, freak. It's Chase Young playing offense. <laughs> I mean, this guy, the absolute animal. I can't think of his name, but it was really fun to watch. There were some wild, wild games, though, and it was a lot of fun. And um, it you know, had me thinking about you know, different things. But I was like, man, summer's done now. We're past Labor Day. Summer's over with. It, summer, I mean, we've talked about hot and humid on the show before, right? So clearly, I'm, people will be like, oh, Josh probably isn't a big fan of summer. No, I, I love summer. I don't love the humidity. Um, I like to go places where it's not you know, so extreme. But Summer does bring a lot of distractions. I think subconsciously everyone lets off the gas during the summer. And it's difficult to, to maintain the momentum that maybe you started the year with, right? Because everybody comes off the holidays. It's like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Okay, I get it. My business, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Okay, I get it. And you're pushing hard. You get over the low. You're rolling, you're rolling, rolling. Then summer hits. And everything on TV, everything on the radio, everything that you're seeing, it's, ah, oh, vacation. Relax. Take it easy. Look at the cruise going. Look at the cruise boat going. Everybody's on the cruise chilling. Look at everybody down at the beach. Look at all these things. And everything just screams rest. Drives me crazy, right? Because while people do, because like kids are on vacation and all that stuff. So yeah, people are traveling and doing their things. You still have to function. You still got to make decisions. You still got to work. And it's, it's like all businesses suffer because people go on vacation for a week. It takes them another week just to get their shit back in order when they, when they get back. Right. You feel me? Yeah. So it's it, summer's done. Two thirds of the year are complete. Where are you at with your goals? When you came into the year, you know, whether it's with your family or business, you know, where are you at with these things? The things that you said you're going to do, where are you at? For me personally, I said July under 250. I ain't under 250 yet. Closer than I was when I started in January, but I ain't under 250 yet. Is it an L? No, it ain't a yet L, but it's not a win either. Momentum was lost. Took, let off the gas a little bit with the business. You know, I, I think we're, we're doing well, but I think collectively as a unit, we let off the gas a little bit. And so I'm excited that trips are, are done and over with, um, everybody's travel kids are, kids are back in school. So that distraction's kind of for a lot of people, you know, gone away and guys, I'm not saying you're distraction to me. Y'all do your own thing. So uh, <laughs> don't take it that way. But, you know, when they're around and we're trying to deal with this, we're trying to deal with that, there's just stuff. There's just things. And that's done because Labor Day has done past. And so now what are we doing to get back on track? Because we only got a third of the year left, a third. And at the end of the month, we got a quarter. 
So three weeks away from the last quarter, the final quarter. And you were talking about the difference between good and great, right? Good and great, I would also say, has a hell of a lot to do with that fourth quarter and how you show up. How is your training? What has it led to, right? Tell that to Brian Kelly. <laughs> that was fun to watch, too. Oh, it was real, <laughs> real, real funny. That to poor watch. bastard, though, Devin was asking me, he's like, well, what do you think? Should he have gone for two? I said, baby, it don't matter. If he gone gone for two and got it, hero. If he had kicked the extra point and made it, overtime, good call. But they'd have been like, you should have gone for two. Missing the extra point was really the only scenario where you're just an absolute bum. Yeah, and again, did not help me cover my bet. Lost that one too. So thank you, Brian Kelly. But that's but that is what I'm saying though. Like you've got to close. And we're coming down to that standpoint where everything that matters that you said you were gonna do, all right, things you're going to accomplish, it's getting down down to it, guys. It's September. It's September. And really you got September, October, the first three weeks of November. And then a lot of people mentally start to check out. Once that turkey hits, they start to check out. December's kind of a wash. You got to really push your people hard to keep them focused to get through the holidays. Because the world starts screaming again, hey, focus on the holidays. I blame Mariah Carey. Focus on, I walked in the damn house yesterday. Dev and I went and got breakfast. i like, babe, you hear music? We open the door. Kiki's in there making like apple cinnamon muffins or something with Mariah Carey Christmas music playing. Like, calm down. We don't do that in this house till Thanksgiving after dinner. Like, we don't do that. But we danced and we sang and it was fine. It was, it was kind of nice. But it's here already. And so people start, just the mindset shifts. And yes, remember the reason for the season. I'm all about all these things. But what do you got to do to accomplish what you set out to do? We've just come out of a period of distractions with the summer. And I hope you had a good time. I hope you had a great time. I hope you had time with family and friends and adventures and new experiences. You got to go out on the boat. You got to go, you know, on a, a trip overseas. You got to see something and experience something that you've never done before. That's done. What do you got to do now to accomplish the goals that you set in the first quarter? What do you have to do now to make up for letting off the gas in the third quarter to close strong and be a champion and get to where you want to be? So there's all this stuff going on, but summer's done. Where are you at compared to where you said you would be? How does it look? What are the circumstances? Are you better than where you started? Have you made any progress at all? If not, and what you set out to do is too far out there, do you need to reevaluate on what is attainable for the year? And I'm not saying to, to sandbag your, your, your numbers, you know, and, and downplay it, but what's realistic? Like what is obtainable? Because are you going to keep chasing something that you know damn good and well is unrealistic at this point in the year and you and your team and the morale is just going to be completely blown because you can't meet this objective anymore. You might want to consider adjusting those things. We adjusted some stuff. We had goals that we came into for the back in December for 2022 that we had to, to reconfigure those over the summer because our hiring didn't go how I anticipated it would go. We had some leadership transitions that we didn't anticipate in a couple places. And so we had to put a couple things on hold and we're tracking to have a record year. However, it is not going to be what we thought it was going to be coming into 2022. So a month ago, we sat and looked at where we at, what are we trying to do, and what needs to happen now between now and December 31 that we're going to feel like, hey, we did the work. We, we, we put forth great effort and consistency and client experiences and the quality of the dogs. And we're like, yes, we did great. 
how do we improve upon this now in 2023? Because the numbers we originally had set out in front of us with the number of families we wanted to impact, number of trainers we wanted to have, uh, revenue we wanted to create, um, other uh, uh, divisions we wanted to open up and get going, not all of those things came to light. And that's just the reality sometimes, guys. I'm not sitting here beating myself up because – not every circumstance and not every play lined up exactly to allow those things to happen. We're just making some adjustments to see, hey, where at the end of the year, because because we're going to win. I don't, I actually care a lot if we fall short, but I'm not going to have us chasing an objective that is unrealistic to where my team or myself feels like we just didn't, we, we, we missed by so far, we must be trash. Right. That's 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 not fair to anybody. And that's going to blow everybody up. And I don't know that I've always been good about that. I've tried to, to get better. So in the last month, six weeks, I did. I kind of broke the numbers down and I adjusted a lot of stuff because that's realistic for where we're at. And that's important to do, guys. And so I challenge you to do that. If you didn't have any objectives set out, which if you listen to the show for any amount of time, I, I'm really pissed if you didn't set any objectives because we talked specifically about having something you know, that you're working towards. Because if you don't have a goal in mind, if you don't have a destination that you're headed, it, every day you're finding reasons just to stay where you're at because there's nothing drawing you forward. You got the GPS on the map, the little arrow, the little bubble is always moving along that blue path as you're heading towards your destination. It's progress. If you're sitting there, what's the point of the GPS map if nothing ever moves? Right? It's not even fun to watch. You want to see that progress. You want to see where it says it's going to take you two hours and 34 minutes when you start that trip out. But when you realize it's only going to take you two hours and 29, you know you're a champion because you cut five minutes off that GPS. Don't play like you don't know, Jonathan, what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. I try not to push my uh, <laughs> Ford 4, <laughs> my Ford 4, or Toyota 4Runner over uh, over two RPMs, like, you know, the or the 2000, <laughs> the 2000. RPMs. Yeah, <laughs> I, I try to keep it below we, that. We need, you know what we should do in October uh, when you get back, because I know you're going to be traveling for a couple weeks. In October or November, we should do an episode where we interview the forerunner. No. And we create questions for the forerunner and we walk through answers that the forerunner would have. Because that forerunner has been referenced so many times on this show, I feel like it deserves a spot in the seat. Uh-huh. And so we can, we can set up the mics and everything in the car. And we'll, we'll, we'll see. It's, uh, <laughs> I don't I don't have AC. So when you talk mm. about enjoying the summer, I'm like, I don't enjoy the maybe summer. December, maybe December, January. We do yeah, that in the four. Probably a better idea. So no AC windows down and you won't push it over 2000 RPMs. Nope. It, it just takes me a little bit to get up to 60 on the interstate. You should see all the people pass me. I'm like, I'm driving in a hoopty. I'm not going <laughs> to. I love it, man. I love it. You that that vehicle knows about Afton Mountain. Going up over Afton, right uh, out of Charlottesville yeah. to Stanton. Yep. Successfully done it several times in yeah. the Forerunner. Yeah. I lost a car on that mountain one time. Blew up. Coasted into Waynesboro off the exit because I, I blew that thing up going up the mountain. And I just rode it to the gas station, called mom, came and got me. It was bad news. Yep. 302,000 miles on the Forerunner. <sighs> Toyota. It's the truth. Built to last. <laughs> Is that what they say? I don't. I don't know if that's what they say, but that's probably I don't, I don't, one of them. Is tagged built to last. I don't know if that's Toyota though. It's definitely not the one running as long as my Forerunner. I'll tell you what. <laughs> that's so funny. So anyway, what? Yeah, built to last. Built to last. Did you do what you needed to do to be built to last this year in 2022? And if you didn't, what do you need to be doing right now? to get you there by the end of the year, all right? Because time is going. I don't know that I can think of a year that went by as fast as this year. It's like, Josh, it's September. Stop acting like it's over with. Child, it is over with. It is It is done. You will blink, and this year is done. They got the Halloween joints out in the store now. Next week, it's going to be freaking pilgrims and turkeys. Like, this is just how it goes. By October 1st, there's going to be Christmas trees in stores it always happens sooner so don't let 
Don't let all this great marketing lull you to sleep. You got work to do. You got things to accomplish, whether for yourself personally or for your business. What do you need to do? The fourth quarter is coming. Put that plan together this month. What needs to happen? What needs to happen? What do you need to do? What hire do you need to make? What fire do you need to make? What tough conversation do you need to have so that you are primed and set to make that progress and get that W in the fourth quarter? Mid-game adjustments, right, Jonathan? It's a big deal. Those typically the people who win, they made better real-time adjustments. Oh, yeah, for sure. To the game plan. You know, if you're out there getting kicked in the face, you're not making any progress. You're like, I'm just going to keep plugging away, doing the same thing I've always done and expect it to work out this time. It's not going to work out. Yeah, that was uh, that was my issue with UVA football while I was there was that it was always if we play our brand of football, we yeah. can win. I'm like, that doesn't mean throw a swing pass to the tackle <laughs> in the final game against Tech. Because our brand of football clearly has a reputation of winning those tough matches. Right? No. So why can't we just get a W? Well, because we can always do the same sorry ass stuff. Yep, and now we have Tony Elliott, our Lord and Savior. Well, we're gonna see how he does. Give the brother a chance and see what he can do. I mean, he's talented. Yeah, he's talented. He's got the resume. I think it'll see just be does. just be easier to recruit people, just because half of our recruiting class would just be gone on uh, Latter Day Saints missions. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you need to do in this fourth quarter to get it done? All right. You have a, you have three weeks to figure it out, to close strong, do the work. Don't just sit back and wait and stop expecting the, the stuff that you're always doing to get you different results than what you currently have always gotten. All right. We'll see you next time on the big dog podcast.